All right, uh, welcome to this special Thursdays with InfoBib, a special series curated by Exchange for Media in association with InfoBib. And today is the very first uh, session of this series, and we have two exciting uh, lineups. The first is the fireside chat, followed by a panel discussion. So I want to uh, get into the first uh, conversation, which is a fireside chat on surge of digital engagement to accelerate business. And this fireside chat is between Mr. Rajeshwar Rao, VP and head of digital growth. And uh, the questions will be, the host is Mr. Amandeep Sa, business head, North and uh, Welcome gentlemen to this first conversation. To you, Mr. Sani. Thank you, Rehan. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction and the warm uh, welcome. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Uh, I was actually imagining, uh, you know, that we'll have a nice uh, bonfire in Delhi's cold weather and have a cozy fire chat uh, with uh, Rajeshwar. But it looks like, you know, it will be a pure uh, digital meet. I'm just focusing on the word digital here because uh, that's the biggest buzzword. Uh, that is the survival mantra that we had in 2020 for all businesses. Somebody who's not digital would be very difficult for us to survive. As we know, customer engagement is critical for success, be it retail business, be it an automobile business, be it an e-commerce venture. As we step into a new decade, it's imperative for us to understand where we are heading in this retail trade. Certainly, the consumers are much more informed and much more conscious, you know, capable of actually taking conscious swapping decisions. But is are the retailers ready for an experience that actually surpasses or matches customer expectations? That's the question I have, uh, dear friends. Are the retailers ready to offer an experience that actually surpasses customer expectations? A recent survey conducted uh, by the Retailers Association of India to gauge consumer sentiment has yielded a few key insights which the retail industry can actually use as a basic consumption for their revival strategy and which can actually work for their short-term and medium-term goals. Since lockdown, the restriction and social distancing norms meant a business impact, an impact because customers cannot physically go visit the market, cannot visit brick and mortar outlets and do shopping. For retailers, the only option is the contactless way of digital transactions, which actually provided a very safe way to purchase goods and other items sitting at their own home. That's the uh, background of you know what is currently happening. Let's have a deeper conversation with our uh, customer and industry expert, Rajeshwar Rao. Rajeshwar, uh, as mentioned earlier, is the vice president and head of digital initiatives at Lovia. Welcome, Rajeshwar. Thanks, Back thanks, to today. So, uh, let's understand. Let's understand how Clovia has laid the path to recovery in this pandemic situation. Uh, sure. Rajeshwar, to what extent, uh, according to you, know, uh, has the pandemic impacted the retail industry? And you, and uh, considering the last three, four months, how is the industry coping up with the ongoing crisis? Uh, also considering the fact, you know, that Clovia had also to, was made to halt their business operations for a couple of months. Right. What do you think? So firstly, thanks for having me, Aman. Now, so yeah, so pandemic was a seasonic event for uh, marketing as a concept per se, right? And a lot of rules uh, changed overnight. Let's say, I mean, some vast medium of communications like newspaper, or radio got disrupted. And uh, now they're coming back to normal per se. And uh, one more interesting factor is uh, OTD has gained a lot of traction uh, in the media play and uh, also matching up with the television per se. So at that time, I mean, we need to realign uh, marketing sources for reaching the right uh, audience per se. And uh, a classic example of such realignment was April, June quarter for us. So wherein we realized we'll not have the business uh, as we were kept out of uh, essentials, not the budgets uh, to speak to customers. So we kind of realigned ourselves to focus on uh, one metric called engagement. So there are almost uh, six in a work days with content uh, 
I mean, ranging from making videos to memes to, I mean, live sessions on uh, cookery. So basically, anything we could offer to our uh, board customers and uh, also stay connected with them, you know. And the results were phenomenal. I mean, uh, so our app downloads and engagement continue to stabilize uh, in spite of uh, zero spends and revenue. Yeah. Thanks, Rajeshwar. Uh, Rajeshwar, uh, you know, it might uh, take a while for uh, customers to actually, you know, go and visit the stores um, mm -hmm. because of the pandemic and the social distancing norms, you know, that industry has to follow. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, having such a scenario, how do you see, uh, how do you foresee the customer engagement in the coming uh, months or maybe for 2021? Right. So, though I'm leading on in business, uh, so we'll still cover retail bit uh, as much as I can. So, I mean, even though all the doomsday scenario for offline retail are being discussed, uh, so we believe it's difficult to hold back uh, offline recovery, you know, unless a new wave of COVID hits us. Having said that, uh, the impact is substantial and the way customers are growing now are conscious about what they buy and how they buy. Uh, so some factors will be important to notice. And uh, one of the factors is, I mean, tier two and three contribution to online will increase. So, I mean, now, uh, so grocery has basically introduced them to online uh, during lockdown. So it's now up to us to keep them excited, uh, you know. And the other factor is people will be cautious of unbranded products, something which is uh, an issue in our category as well. So now branded purchase will go out leading to more organized players over uh, unorganized ones, you know. Yeah. Uh, that is not of advantage when you talk about the branded purchase because that's where the customer confidence lies. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, Rajeshwar, how do you assess the gap between your customer needs and your delivery? And you know, what are the measures uh, one can take to improve and prioritize satisfaction? Yeah. So I mean, so basically, we need to be fanatic about hygiene. Primarily, I mean, now uh, so warehouse and stores need to be sanitized properly. And every team member within the ecosystem, right from ground sales staff or uh, you know, staff to be trained properly. And uh, all communication about it to end consumer is the key, you know, so that they should feel totally secure when they're buying from us, right? And finally, we should have tight control of third parties like uh, our partners. So that is more reactive action on uh, complaints than proactive. I think the partner ecosystem was a must here. Uh, exactly, exactly. The the partners having control over them is, is, is must yeah to be proactive uh, rather than reactive exactly exactly yeah that is uh, coming to my next uh, question here how are you delivering information to those who need it you know what kind of tools or technologies uh, do you think a retailer or an e-commerce player should use to engage customers mm -hmm. with a value added experience so i mean there are so many ways to connect right i mean right from email sms notifications or uh, social media and uh, so now we have WhatsApp too, right? And this is where InfoBip is helping us uh, reaching out to the right customers with the right set of content, right? And uh, your brand message has to be coherent, you know? You could not just have one way and uh, language of communication on one channel, another language on another channel. I mean, so key is to keep so much data or content going on completely coherent. And uh, there are some automation tools uh, that needs to try to ensure one understands early when a customer is going overburdened with information. And uh, there are some tools uh, which are used to cut channels uh, that are not efficient as such. So that way, you will not lose your uh, good brands and up uh, stalking customers, I mean, which eventually leads to a lot of heartburn and uh, business space loss uh, with time, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, WhatsApp as a channel uh, is the only channel which is available, which is a two way communication channel. and uh, Exactly, exactly which makes a lot of business sense here. Yeah, we're hoping some good traction from WhatsApp too, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, Rajeshwar, uh, coming to the next question, Clovia yeah. as a brand has adopted a physical, a digital kind of a model where you guys have the uh, online presence also and at the same time you are uh, guys are dependent on exclusive and uh, multi-retail outlets. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, uh, a customer uh, visiting a store might have a very different profile than a customer visiting the uh, online uh, segment here. In the right. whole discovery process, how do you think retailers you know, can get the balancing act right, focusing on safety, value, pricing to boost customer sales and satisfaction? Yeah. So the key is to, I mean, have your messaging similar, you know, 
so understand what's working where. I mean, for example, uh, in our case, we take so we saw offline the online customer had little overlap, you know. So also our uh, offline customer was little elder in age. I mean, let's say I mean, 18 to 35 in online and 35 plus in offline. If you look at majority per se, I mean. So, I mean, we define our communication accordingly. So one such example, if you have to quote, so, so we really type with Colors TV, you know, TV celebs wearing Premier products. And uh, that kind of, uh, I mean, communication that we pushed on offline. So while influencers worked on pushing online communications as such, you know. And uh, one more important factor is our price parity is essential, you know. So we cannot have uh, different pricing on different channels. And so, I mean, it kills the trust in brand, right? I mean, both the sellers, sellers, I mean, uh, so retailers and marketplaces and the buyers also, buyers, I mean, the end, end customers. So if you cannot maintain parity, so, I mean, at least put different products in different channels, right? I yeah. agree, Rajesh, uh, customer has, as I mentioned earlier, customer has become much more uh, conscious, uh, much exactly, more- Exactly, exactly. And actually prefers a way which is uh, digital as well as physical in the current scenario. Even exactly. So we'll, also, we'll have to maintain that trust and confidence throughout yes, channels. Yes, yes. And that's only yeah. possible when you have a universal, a universal pricing across all channels. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Rajeshwar, your final words and advice, you know, to the businesses on what are the top three things to manage uh, the omni-channel uh, touch point of consumers? So, I mean, like I said before, you know, so keep communication coherent. And uh, second one is, uh, so we should not have competitive advantage to one channel. So we should give equal opportunity, you know, so equal opportunity is required uh, for trust in brand, right? And lastly, we should keep our, uh, I mean, gross margins intact. So it won't be the channel just for the presence or just for the sake of it, you know? I mean, for example, uh, exclusive for store, I mean, exclusive store for marketing. That's a myth, right? I mean, exclusive store for marketing is a myth, I mean. So if gross margins uh, don't add up, you'll not be able to scale the business in the channel, right? And we'll eventually lose all the efforts that is gone in. So these are the three, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, these are three yeah. advices from my end, you know. Okay, Rajeshwar, thank you so much. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just summarize uh, the discussion points because uh, on a personal level, I really think the world is changing with every passing day. I think more than as the business and the customers evolve. And businesses are uh, actually looking to recover from the effects of the uh, post-pandemic uh, lockdown situation. Right, right. They should you know they should be uh, base, they should base their approach on the underlining uh, predictability because uh, one word that is going to be very normal and frequent is change. Mm -hmm. and, correct, uh, correct. This this situation has put us into a forced change, but it has actually opened our eyes also. Exactly. The future is actually digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, the shopping the expenditure will undergo significant changes after the scenario here because customers are now fight between a value added customer and a price one. Exactly, exactly. 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 As you know, few product categories will continue to see high levels of interest. We could expect you know customers to be conscious while spending and uh, when they do purchase something and. Uh, we really need to, you know, change and adapt to the digital world. And That's as Rajeshwar mentioned, you know, this whole scenario of success is only possible uh, when there is a metric of engagement, when there is a partner who is not reactive but proactive, when you have omni-channel approach, but a same strategy for a customer visiting all the channels, be it WhatsApp, be it a physical store, be it an online purchase and uh, what works is yes there is overlapping and uh, what uh, better which has worked the thing which has been better done by Korea, i could see that they have their ages defined of customers which has actually helped them in yeah yeah thank you thank you, uh, thank you. Thanks so much there's a question uh, for mr rao uh, uh, the name is not given uh, yeah, yeah which is that with COVID uh, hitting the Markham, uh, Markham budgets, uh, what channels have worked for Clovia and how would you analyze channel-specific performance, uh, influence of marketing campaigns on offline purchase? So, I mean, so when, when COVID hit us, you know, so we shifted our uh, focus to, I mean, organic per se, because we don't have to, I mean, push budgets there. It's pure organic, right? So, 
and the other important medium is uh, social media and uh, uh, followed by our notifications and like i said you know so we have created uh, engaging content you know right from different set of videos uh, memes uh, and since since uh, our tg is uh, predominantly female so we used to make live sessions on now uh, so people i mean female uh, who, i mean uh, so interest interest of female uh, sort of uh, live sessions and all you know so one such uh, interest is i mean kukri for say right so right. that that way so uh, we used to i mean focus on all the organic uh, traffic and uh, so that's how that's how we used to engage our customers so that so that time there is no clarity as such right i mean if you, even if i spend a single penny so i'm not sure of uh, any return as such but at the same time i would not sure i mean so how much time this uh, pandemic will go so till the, i mean till the time this is on i'll have to maintain that engagement you know so that was the right. primary focus and uh, those are the channels which i focused on you know yeah great uh, thank you mr rao and mr sani for this lovely conversation and i must just mention that uh, you're watching uh, e4m presents thursdays with infobip and thanks again gentlemen and we will move on to our next uh, session which is a panel discussion uh, the topic of the discussion is reimagining retail and e-commerce in 2021 as we know covid has done many disruptions and one of the big pause in the e space we have with the leader I want to introduce our panelists for this uh, special panel we have mr kashyap vadapli uh, chief marketing officer and business head pepper fry uh, we have mr ritesh goshal chief marketing officer uh, uh, mr putting deputy manager us mr vikas chohan gofa and the session chair uh, for this panel is mr shankar ayer head customer success infobeb welcome gentlemen to this panel and before i hand it over i just want to also announce that we'll be taking questions please post your questions and we will make sure that they get answered thank you for joining us thank you thank you rohel uh, um... Hello and everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, today's session uh, to reimagine retail and e-commerce in 2021. Uh, it's my pleasure to have an esteemed pool of panelists alongside uh, who will tell us the story behind the scenes during such peculiar times. Uh, a lot has changed in the past ten months. Uh, we know few changes have remained. We call them as a new norm, and some of them I'm sure would rewind back. to be the uh, march 2020 we all know it's it was a herculean task for every organization to sail through this period uh, the recent trends though are a little positive uh, and the sentiment of people are also positive because of a lot of other external factors will it be now safe to say that the retail industry has regained the lost ground or shall we say that the e-commerce business is the new way of retailing or will it both exist together that's our topic for discussion today where you know we'll find out from our panelist how it could be in 2021 going forward let me start with kashyap uh, kashyap we saw an enormous success and growth in the e-commerce business there was a spike and predominantly we saw a lot of new users coming on board do you see this is the foundation for the growth of e-commerce business in 2021 sure uh, hi everybody uh, glad to be here and share my thoughts um so directly coming to the question uh, that shankar posed uh, e-commerce uh, in india and globally uh, has been moving in one direction e-commerce penetration has been growing uh, if you look at uh, some of the developed markets uh, what had happened was e-commerce as a percentage of retail had reached anywhere between 15 to 20% of the market uh, and it had slowed down growing after that you know it, it rapidly in the in 10 years time frame uh, let's say e-commerce in the west started in 95 uh, started picking up speed in 2000 uh, between 2000 and 2010 uh, it probably reached 15% penetration 15% of all retail was going through online uh, after 2010 the growth has been slow uh you know uh, it's been you know 15 going to 16 16 going to 17 very very slowly over a couple of years each uh but what we've seen during 2020 is that uh, 
almost 10 percentage points of growth has been added so if you look at us and a lot of the western markets e-commerce now is 26 27 28 percent so so uh, number one e-commerce and, and and let's look at india in india i think uh, e-commerce really started almost 15 years later um, while technically uh, you know there were firms doing e-commerce in india right from 2001 2002 I think it only picked up, uh, you know, pace on around 2010, 2011. So we are a 10-year-old, 9-year-old market. Uh, you know, people like Amazon entered India in end of 2013. So you know, so we are a seven, eight, nine-year-old market. Uh, E-commerce penetration in India is in single digits. Uh, obviously, we were going to go. We were going to go to 15 percent. Okay, we would eventually get to 25 percent that the Western markets have come. It's a question of how quickly it will happen. So, firstly, the point I'm making is direction is there. It, the penetration has to increase. It will go to 15% and then eventually to 25%. What happened last year was an acceleration of this penetration. Yeah. Obviously, there are obvious reasons why this acceleration happened. Uh, because of the lockdown, uh, physical retail, you know, obviously shut down for a much longer period. I know all kinds of retail shut down for a couple of months but warehouses and distribution opened up a little bit earlier it opened up by may early may whereas retail really especially if you think of malls etc opened up in july august so there was a three four month uh, you know a period during which uh, e-commerce went through obviously there was a ton of e-commerce happening even during the lockdown on the essential goods but even non-essential goods started happening starting uh, like i said mid may so yeah. so so fundamentally here's what i think i think that uh, Last year proved to be an acceleration. We've seen, uh, again, you know, using an industry specific example, we've seen like a 40% jump in the number of searches online for our category. Uh, we've seen similarly a 40 to 50% jump in the uh, traffic uh, that, 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 you know, our website was receiving. I mean, if I kind of, you know, do some mathematics and remove all the paid marketing bit, which obviously we, we, we didn't continue doing extensive paid marketing during the lockdown phase because we wanted to maintain ROI but even if I take that aside uh, all the 40 to 50 percent increase in online interest in the category in the form of search almost all of it translated into traffic onto the website so the so, so what last year did is uh, uh, the direction was always there it was always going to increase penetration of e-commerce it helped to speed it up by a very very large extent different industries to different amounts uh, but i think most industries would have seen anywhere between two or 20 to 50 percent jump uh, in, in in you know consumer interest right finally whether that translated into sales is a function of pricing and so yeah. on and everything but in indian consumers interest in e-commerce got accelerated during last year Right. So I think the word is acceleration. I mean, uh, what I understand is we've got the speed now. Um, how are you going to maintain that speed is going to be the big question, which probably down the line in the session we will address. Uh, but you mentioned about something that went on uh, during the lockdown as well was the essentials. And my next question to Vikas is on that, where I, where I want to understand from you that the basic essentials were one of the key products in demand through online channels. In fact, somebody who is not a digital guy also thought of coming on digital only because of the essentials, probably. Let's put it that way. I just want to understand from you, come from a healthcare background, just share your experience on healthcare and how do you see that trend in those in that category in, in e-commerce and what has changed with that consumer behavior? So, uh, thank you everyone um, uh, for being present today and uh, being a part of this conversation. Um, I think um, COVID uh, certainly changed uh, uh, the dynamics of the world that existed and um, uh, the new normal is how we are defining it uh, is getting accepted across uh, uh, different stratas uh, of the uh, consumers that we see today. Now, um, essential services meant uh, uh, largely that uh, Everybody wanted a safe and uh, controlled environment for themselves, so not to st uh, step out. Um, uh, the fear of COVID was, uh, and in fact, still there. So, how do you how do you ensure that uh, the the necessities were uh, uh, unable uh, uh, to 
uh, may to to get access to the consumer to have to consumers to have access to it now there were two important parts to it one um, um, if you look at uh, uh, healthcare in uh, uh, general there were two parts to it that that fundamentally got changed uh, in this segment one is uh, the provider side uh, and when i say provided side it's, it's the doctors or the hcp community that we talk about and the second is the consumer side now um, from a consumer side you see a lot of adoption of technology that was already happening for lifestyle and other brands and eventually that would have percolated for healthcare what covid did was uh, bring uh, uh, this uh, or prepone this by couple of years so teleconsultation for example um, um, uh, rose almost 400 500% in certain categories for multiple players in us uh, during covid and 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 similarly the delivery of uh, medicine and other aspects uh, that you see i think uh, for consumers it prepone and there was a fundamental shift that happened on the hcp side as well a lot of doctors who have never used the ehr phr tool uh, shifted to this medium to keep a constant connect or enable access to the patient to the healthcare services so these were two um, um, structural shift that happened in the healthcare segment which you'll see a lot of creating a lot of tailwinds for this sector to continuously grow i think um, another thing that happened was um, uh, entry of uh, or uh, slight consolidation with um, big players entering into the segment and uh, further strengthening uh, the concept and vision that this segment holds uh, of enabling digital access of healthcare services to the end consumer so that would be that would be uh, my view or my submission on this yeah we are you right actually the the important question was the acceptability of um, the I, if i put it this way the doctor and the patient both to actually digitally connect uh, because it's it's a very very critical segment isn't it uh, in the healthcare and uh, to accept that digitally was a was one thing which probably covid helped in doing it i would rather say because that's that's what it demanded at that point in time uh, moving ahead uh, you know uh, pavan it's a very different industry a uh, very large offline presence for you and so you hit a block right uh, what was your strategy to meet this new consumer demand you know which only looked at screens <clears throat> okay hi and good afternoon everyone so best you are absolutely right for a brand like ours which has almost 40 million daily consumer touch points in this country and the retail presence i guess in more than uh, 1 million media stores yes we have and you are absolutely right in saying that we have a huge offline presence and uh, which is true for a brand which uh, you know has uh, so many connect across the entire spectrum of society especially for masses now what happened during covid especially when covid struck and in the initial period in late march when lockdown was imposed the first and the biggest challenge that we faced especially when in the context of our industry was how to make sure that our customers had access to the entire range of our products especially in times when there were restrictions of movement they couldn't step out of home there were compulsions of you know staying within home and all that so the biggest challenge was how to overnight almost overnight create those channels to solve the last mile connectivity problems that were clearly uh, obvious to everyone so we had even prior to covid <clears throat> we had a fairly big online presence in all the e-commerce and e-grocery platforms but when lockdown happened what we had to do almost overnight and very quickly was create those multiple channels which were able to take us right to the consumers doorstep and have access to them even when they were uh, you know compelled to stay indoors so what did we do we just leverage on everyone anyone and everyone who had the capability to solve the last mile connectivity issue so what i'm saying is the food delivery platforms you know who till that point in time was focusing on something else say a zomato or a swiggy so their business went down as far as the restaurant food delivery came now but they immediately took to brands like ours and they started carrying the entire set of essential grocery products in our case the set of amul products to consumers doorstep 
And it wasn't just the big names that you heard of, uh, pizza delivery platforms, the meal delivery guys. So all of them started delivering a whole range of products to the consumer's doorstep. And we had to create these alternate channels and for the last electricity issue almost overnight. Yeah. Because of that, every town and city during this COVID time, especially in the first two months, there were these mushrooming of small local e-grocery uh, you know, platforms, many of whom were operating just on WhatsApp, you know, taking orders on WhatsApp and doing local home delivery within a small radius. And these were the ones that we also leveraged on. We just made sure that whatever opportunities were available to reach out to people who were locked inside their homes, we did not miss out on any of those opportunities. Right, right. That, uh, definitely paid up, big, uh, you know, paid which dividends to us. One more thing, uh, the big organized retail chains, now they ramped up their only channel presence during this time. So um, you know all the names, they ramped up the on online side of the business. So that also helped us in a very big way. Uh, we started our B2B e-commerce operations around that time. So what I'm saying is there were restrictions on movements. You know how the typical FMTG setup was. So our distributors were, especially in April and May, not able to cover and effectively service the retailer demand that was happening across the country. And there's one more context to this. At, you know, all of us know this, people were spending more time at home, they were compared to, they were cooking at home, they were eating more at home, more than any other point in their entire lives. So there was a big quantum growth in demand for food products, and especially the ones which are consumed at home. And that demand rose sharply, the demand, demand rose by a huge quantum, and all of a sudden, so we had to put up all these alternate channels overnight to right. all those uh, last mile connectivity issues. Today, if you're talking about online versus on, offline, at least as far as the business that goes, that happens through the organized retail chains, through the large, what we call modern trade in our parlance, uh, roughly 35% of it is coming from the online side and the balance of the offline yeah. uh, retail source. Uh, well, a bit of it is only channels, digital, so practically we do our deliveries straight to the distribution center, so the splits are not always uh, of yeah. the channel structures. So you can say it, it could be even as close to 40% of the overall... I, I want you to hold your thoughts on those numbers there, because you know that's where we will head to probably. Uh, but then I get your point, you know, um, you need to scramble to organize a lot of channels and some of the names that you mentioned would have, you would have never thought of probably carrying basic essentials to deliver. But I think that was the uh, call at that time uh, for uh, everyone who was present on the field. Um, and and, and uh, I, I clearly understand, in fact, one of the things which you mentioned about WhatsApp and those kind of social chatting groups and things like that, we, we were also very actively involved in enabling these kind of tools for a lot of organizations because that was the that was the only medium which a lot of organizations had to reach to their consumers. Uh, now I turn to Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh, I've heard you, uh, you know, many times before telling about how you went about organizing the retail front. So I'm not going to ask that question back to you again. But what I want to uh, hear from you is, you know, the omni-channel platform, um, you know, it's been some months now which, which is in place. Uh, we've seen customers, uh, the more customers on uh, outside their homes now, uh, you know, shopping. How do you see this model has delivered, this omni-channel model on the industry expectations? And what are those key business drivers you want to, if you want to highlight to us? Okay, sure. Uh, so first thing first, see the, the customer, the shopper in India has been omni-channel for a very long time. Okay. okay. Uh, browsing online, doing your research online is something uh, I recall when I bought my first, uh, you know, when I chose between an LCD and a plasma back in 2006-7, I used seen it to do my entire research and then I went and purchased somewhere. So, behavior uh, on the customer but can side I interrupt you here? a long time but back. Can I interrupt you here? But is it that that was, yes. that was a small segment of knowledgeable shoppers who did that? I mean, today, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, 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 you know, the, the uh, tools were there even then, the, the uh, platforms were there even then. Two fundamental changes have happened. One is, uh, you know, data speeds and devices on which to browse data has really exploded uh, the customer side of things. 
and yeah. on the yeah, other yeah, hand, yeah. the online marketplaces, because you know, unlike the CNETs of the world, have a revenue model linked to the online space, have really exploded the behavior. So access to data, quality of data, etc., has uh, you know fundamentally changed, and therefore it's a mass habit now. Uh, specific to what has happened uh, during the lockdown and post the lockdown, uh, one is a lot more people have started uh, you know throttling the number of trips they make to the physical market. Okay. Uh, so, uh, shopping for things like uh, the next smartphone you need or uh, earphones, headphones or, you know, uh, let's say your, your uh, you know, printer is running out of ink and you need to change the printer ink, etc. A lot of uh, purchases which used to earlier drive people to our stores uh, have just uh, disappeared. So, we observed uh, small ticket purchases, purchases below 5,000. Uh, had dropped by, you know, it used to be 46% of a business last year. This year, it's it's virtually gone. Okay. Only people who are in the market for a next big article make the effort to come to the store. Others are buying online. So now, even though footfalls are back and, uh, you know, markets are largely open, uh, online business continues to be above 10% of the mix, while uh, store business is also growing versus mm -hmm. last year now. Okay. okay. So that that's one shift. If I can... Uh, you know, if I can reduce my exposure, I will do it. So that's one purpose the uh, online piece is serving. Second piece is uh, before I make the trip and, you know, expose myself to the risk, uh, can I make sure the product is there? Can I make sure whether my credit card will give me a deal and so on and so forth? Therefore, contacting the shopkeeper uh, and then confirming, you know, uh, all these details is, is one thing that, that the site has been used for. Uh, in the online shopper set, there is a small set which uh, is unfamiliar with online shopping, uh -huh. but maybe because they are older, maybe because they are at an at risk population in some way, they are you know choosing the via media of shopping online, uh, but using a video demo in order to you know get a virtual experience of touch and feel. Uh -huh. uh, this this channel which we have started operation. Uh, uh, towards the end of the festive period, actually, when it was stable and really working, uh, we are seeing, you know, business upwards of uh, a couple of crores every week now. And conversion on this channel is almost 40%. So people yeah. who book a call, get on uh, a video chat with the staff in our dark store in Bangalore, uh, four out of 10 are actually ending up buying. So these are some of the, you know, habit changes in the Omni part. Uh, I would okay. expect going forward, see people who have, uh, you know, got used to the uh, navigation and the behavior of buying online uh, will not stop uh, okay. going forward. It, it's okay, a that, fundamental that, shift. You know, yeah. once you have crossed the barrier of sharing your credit card details and seeing that nothing you know bad happened, and, you and, continue. And what that. you wanted got delivered to you, I think. What you wanted that. got delivered to you as well. <laughs> Uh, you know, suddenly, you know, you say, okay, ye bhi kar sakte. Ye bhi kar sakte, right? so what I think is, uh, you know, for the larger investment articles, uh, where, you know, uh, you're worried about whether uh, the new fridge I'm buying will fit into the space, will whether yeah. all my utensils will be fit in, etc. Larger articles, more expensive articles, you will still want to make the, you know, the, the uh, visit to the store. Uh, convenience articles and uh, things which you you know uh, need frequently and uh, need out at the drop of a hat those are all things which are moving online so are you saying that you know the i mean my next question was that only but i'll i'll i'll, I'll continue on that one is 40 percent conversion on the video demo which is practically telling me that a lot of businesses are going in that direction of course uh, so are you also telling that, okay, that's one side of saying the shopper doesn't go out has the convenience of really understanding the product, but, but is it also touching the, the aspect of an experience of the touch and feel of the product, especially in consumer durable, which matters a lot. See, I, I think it is a, a compromise that people are making. Okay. If, if, if uh, you know, between seeing, uh, uh, you know, an iPad being turned around and showing you a refrigerator, 
versus actually seeing the inside of a refrigerator there is a difference yeah okay uh, people who are reluctant to let go of the latter experience but are hesitant to step out i think are you know switching the the video demo route somebody who is comfortable shopping on online uh, you know and and therefore you know uh, assessing the dimensions of the product looking at uh, the the various ways there are of you know exposing the specs uh, and then taking a call will not go through the uh, you know the effort of getting on a video call and you know spending 5 7 minutes uh, uh, you know trying to understand the product someone who's con- confident of stepping out of their home will still prefer to come to the store it- it's the person in the middle uh, maybe because he's older or maybe he's someone who's got an aged parent at home uh, there is some kind of you know reluctance to step out of the home at the same time there is reluctance to buy without seeing is you know uh, plugging this is this product is plugging that gap but quickly tell me uh, where do you think uh, where do will you focus more uh, if you want to really build that customization is it on going to be the online part of it or uh, or is it too early to take a call on that uh, right now look uh, see uh, in mature markets if if you look at uh, and someone was talking about the market being 25% online uh, that's essentially where we see our category as well so if you take this by as an example for them around 25% of the business is online and the rest is at store the store actually supports the online business on the online business supports the store it sort of you know plugs into each other yeah and creates the complete uh, brand story uh, the brand proposition for customers so right. that's where we need to go as well uh, currently okay. like i said we are around 10% of the business is online uh, for us the gaps to be covered the experience uh, to be fixed uh, and and you know uh, the promise to be lived up to is really in the online space Okay. Our customers who come to our stores are really happy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who are shopping online, you know, there have been all kinds of feedback, including saying, "Boy, you should you should stick to running your stores. That's what you know how you do, <laughs> do really do." Okay, uh-huh. but that's that's a uh, painful uh, journey, but it's a hill we need to climb. Yeah. So, so we'll get that. Sure. Okay. I think I think that's that's a very key thing. You know, the touch and feel is been been the very very key part of a marketing strategy for a for a product which has a very high ticket size. You know, buying ticket size is higher, and that's where Kashyap, I just wanted you to throw some light on 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 the experiment of of uh, you know companies who are born digital. You know, I mean, we have seen some of them. They were digital. They moved on to the uh, physical presence after that, where they boosted their brand and actually wanted to bring that immersive experience with the customers. Uh, tell me now, with this business dynamics changing, of course it got accelerated and all that, which is basically on the digital front. But but you know, people have invested and brought both things together. What's your thought with this changing business dynamics? How do you see this model going forward? Sure. So uh, I think again, it's a question of uh, balance and where your category and your brand will settle. Uh, like Ritesh was saying, uh, you know, there are ben- global benchmarks of twenty-five percent being online. Let's say in electronics. Uh, so you're right. We are a uh, we are a digital-first brand. Uh, m- many of our sales happen through uh, the app. Uh, so we are. you know we are an 80% furniture brand 20% we sell non furniture but 80% of our items that we sell are furniture our average ticket size on furniture is around 17 18000 rupees so they are not all just shoe racks and you know side tables so people are buying beds and uh, wardrobes and sideboards and everything else uh and like i said our sing- single largest isolated channel is the mobile app okay so obviously you know uh, it defies uh, it defies common sense for a you know for a unstructured category uh, where customers knowledge about the product and the brands is actually poor uh, standardization around specifications around materials used around design philosophies is is not there for a non standard high ticket size high involvement category people are willing to spend 50 60 70 000 rupees buying sofa sets eight seater dining tables on the mobile app so obviously there is that customer on one side and then there is the customer who will potentially not even uh, you know want to buy a small stool without having sat on it and you know felt the strength of the stool with their own two hands so i think uh, you know it will finally boil down to where the balance happens uh, the way we see it our philosophy is that it's the same customer 
uh, fundamentally it's the same customer uh, you know their same type uh, of customer we are a very actually if you look at it 80% uh, of our sales come from our top 8 cities uh, and if you just look at the pin code kind of a mapping and look at where people are uh, we realize that uh, you know there are homogeneous well traveled and people working in mnc's uh, you know uh, smart confident shoppers uh, they are the same i mean whether they are and these are the same people who also come to our uh, stores we have 65 stores now it's not just an experiment uh, almost uh, 30 35 36 percent of our business comes from our stores uh, so, so it's a significant chunk. Uh, it I have to pause you there. This is very interesting. When you still bought company, you say thirty five percent of the store. What does it say? Is does it say that you know it's 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 a coexisting business? As you said, the balance or what Ritesh said, depending on people. You see that even though we had COVID, we saw so much of surge in online business. You see that trend remains same. That sixty five stores going to increase. Or is it going to be like 65 is the platform to push people more on online, uh, you know, purchasing kind of an activity? How, how do you see that? No, so we think so. So we think well, the customers are same, but the big difference is use cases. Uh, you know, and I think again, uh, I think they talked about it. Uh, if you are doing up your house entirely, you are moving into a new house, or you know, uh, you are doing up an entire room, you are going to buy uh, anywhere between seven to eight items to maybe up to 25 items if you're doing up an entire two bedroom house okay so it's a big commitment uh just from a consumer behavior behavior perspective it's not like a routine consumer response it is an extensive problem that the customer is solving uh right. it occupies a lot of their mind space it's going to occupy a lot large part of their budget and they are willing to put the effort around it in a, in, in terms of finding the right comprehensive solution okay right. Understand. So, so the customer profile is similar. Uh, if I'm just going to replace, like I need to just buy one study table because I'm working from home, uh, you know, I can buy it online. It's going to be in one corner of my bedroom. It's not going to be very design focused. It's a functional product. I'm going to buy it online. It will be costing me anywhere between 8,000 to, you know, 15,000. But if I'm going to do up my entire living room, I'm buying a three seater, two seater dining set sideboard, entertainment unit, coffee table, maybe shoe rack near the door, uh, you know, my budget is suddenly like one and a half lakhs to two lakhs. Uh, you know, I need to ensure that there's a design aspect around it. Uh, things go with each other. So, so in those kind of scenarios, you know, I'd like to experience a little bit more. I'd like to understand more. I'd like to touch and feel more. I'd like, and you know, more than touch and feel, I think it's about trust. It is about somebody assuring you about how the whole thing goes together. So in our stores, uh, the people that are there and just like many other retail places, you really have experts. These are not salespeople, salespeople. They're actually experts, a designer who can actually say that, okay, what's the house looking like? Do you have a photo of your living room? You know, and, and you consult and you make them happen. So the way I see it is it's a balance. Both of them will coexist. The customer profile is not very different, but based on the use case, is it a one-off piece that somebody is buying or is it a comprehensive solution? And, and I'm using the word solution because there are multiple things, right. like lamps thrown in, carpets thrown in, you know, and, and the whole thing comes together. So people taking bigger, higher ticket size, higher involvement use case scenarios, find that a lot of them end up going to our studios. and. and it's not going to change so to your question how do we see going forward so our 65 stores are predominantly in in our top seven eight markets uh but you know 45 of them but uh, the remaining 20 are in smaller cities we are definitely going to try and uh, expand to the next 50 cities by opening one one store in each of the next 50 cities so that the use case is what I, i'm sorry to but i understand that you know what you're saying is that I can clearly see a demarcation, though it's though it's online, it's digital, it's e-commerce, whatever we call. Uh, there is a use case based business and there is a uh, essential or an on-demand based business, which is clearly bifurcating the models of business here. Uh, and obviously, you cannot ignore the digital fact to it, but there is a balance is what what you're drawing in some businesses. And whereas I understand in some businesses, you just need those channels to basically reach to those consumers uh, moving on now you know uh, that brings to the next point you know exactly uh, 
the high ticket size we mentioned and you know we saw the highest ticket size product bought on e-commerce business for last one decade if i take that last 10 years is the predominant years uh, it's been mobile phones and again those ticket sizes have been pretty decent right and people have invested money in it that's purely because i also believe that a lot of discount offers a lot of stuff which attracted consumers to that particular platform but going beyond that we have seen last three years apparels and uh, media and entertainment hospitality these these sectors have also merged into e-commerce very well uh vikas my question to you is healthcare and education uh so you said 400 percent somewhere i heard and that was that's a huge number spike healthcare and education in e-commerce industry how do you visualize that um so uh, this is uh, this is very interesting and it adds to the conversation uh, which kashyap also just mentioned that you know you have to look at the category um, a high involvement uh, low ticket size would be the first category or uh, low in low involvement low ticket size would be the first category that you'll see people participating then high involvement um, mm -hmm. low ticket size and and that's how how, that's how the curve will move and um, uh, it, it's a natural progression that we've seen mobiles uh, uh, with nokia phone is a nokia phone a one plus phone is a one plus phone so there it is the decisions are e um, largely equal you look at uh, which is the best price you can get on it um, then uh, you reach a stage where um, you trust the the medium and uh, you trust that online payments are secure you trust the brand that i'm interacting with is secure then you move to the much uh, uh, much uh, uh, next level uh, in the category which is touch and feel and and you saw lifestyle and other aspects that came into it and then pretty much the furniture um, i think um, we have seen that evolution has happened and what you're doing is you gain a consumer and you uh, continuously hopping for more and more wallet share so a lot of vertical players are moving and 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 you see it is merging towards certain few horizontal players uh, 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 taking a larger share now uh, healthcare and education both have one more very different element to it so safety security and touch feel and all those elements are there uh, both of them have a lot of uh, legacy or trust aspect that is there um, this is uh, uh, Healthcare to purely is a need-based uh, category that comes into the picture, uh, uh, and it works very differently from an aspirational category. Uh, secondly, uh, education, if you talk about, again, partially need-based, but uh, a lot of, again, um, uh, high involvement, um, legacy uh, brands or, or, or the value chain or the, uh, the people involved uh, do get mad, uh, you know, consider in the decision making. Now, if you talk about uh, uh, the excess problem that it has solved, uh, if you look at the number of doctors per uh, individual in the country or number of hospital beds uh, uh, per individual in the country, uh, you need solutions to able to address these fundamental problems that uh, uh, exist in the value chain. And if you look at the rural and uh, uh, the urban divide, uh, uh, the numbers are highly unfavorable uh, to the rural part. Now, how do you solve the problem of excess of quality healthcare or education to these uh, some of the pyramid where actual uh, uh, Bharat or India is, is whatever you call it? What you're saying is that what you're saying is that this sector will take a space in e-commerce, solving some basic uh, national issues right now. I mean, to, to that extent, if I if I can put it, I mean, these are like you know serious issues which. And e-commerce can address is that is that my understanding right so uh it, it is not just e-commerce uh this is this is a digital uh era uh that we have yeah covid has enabled it so uh, transactions is is a part of it it is also access to information that consumer can get today and that's the larger part see if uh, aware consumer uh, empowered consumer is much more in position to make uh better uh, decisions about his uh, education about his uh, health care about uh, any of the lifestyle choices that he make and that's where the power of digital comes see e-commerce is is a part of this whole uh, digital um, era which we have come to and covid has certainly helped so uh, if if there were any doubts that education and healthcare uh, uh, may uh, will they be playing a major role in this uh, uh, from a digital forefront, uh, COVID has uh, made sure uh, 
that those uh, certain aspects or those certain doubts have been wiped out. Um, the rate at which is growing, the consumer adoption that is has happening in this field is phenomenal. I think um, uh, it solves some of the fundamental issues, uh, structural issues and challenges which exist in the value chain for healthcare delivery or education system access which are there. And it brings to the forefront a good quality access to even the remotest part of the country. I think um, this segment is here to stay and grow at an exponential pace. Yeah, I, I take your point in terms of access, the digital front from an access and information point of view, you're right. But I think I think the transaction is what my focus question was and because of which I use the word e-commerce and, and that's where probably an aware customer, which is mostly in the urban and metro is now able to put that trust, which is the, the key word which you used in that sector was trust, especially healthcare, uh, where they're able to put that trust uh, on, on that screen and able to connect with uh, and, and you know address their healthcare concerns. Uh, but point taken, I think access information will further lead to this in, in the rural market as well. Um, Just to add, uh, I think you passed out on the point that this is a need-based category. So right. if you need a medicine, whichever part you are, you will find a way to access it. And if uh, if that means somebody has to click, uh, travel say 50 kilometers to get it, they will do it. Or if that means an e-commerce venture can help you uh, get an access to it, you will use it. So uh, that need-based category, eventually, wherever the uh, fundamental uh, uh, supply chain gaps are there or excess gaps are there is there to fill so awareness mm -hmm. helps you make better decisions uh, and and this this certainly helps you connect the service gaps or overcome that which are which are there right right thanks because for that and uh, this brings me to my last question or probably second last if, if time permits uh, Pawan, uh, you know i just want to understand you you touched upon those points but fmcg products uh, not like consumer durable or lifestyle or anything else is in the flux of online versus physical retailing. And I say that because these are basic essentials. Uh, you know, once you gain grounds back, once things normalize, you know, these are like available next door, uh, you know, next lane kind of scenario. How do you see uh, this, you know, being so diverse consumer behaviors where you will have people online and also, uh, you know, behaving the traditional way? How do you position your products and businesses in future. Quick one. Okay, uh, Shankar, what I feel this entire COVID period has created four irreversible changes in the world around us. And I'm speaking only in context of food, FMCG and grocery, uh, the world from which I come. So, uh, very quickly, one, uh, online, the sheer convenience of online purchasing, okay? even when it comes to something as routine, repetitive, or planned as grocery shopping lists, okay? Once people have experienced the convenience of, you know, placing an order from the mobile phone app and expecting home deliveries, even post-COVID, after the vaccinations and after, you know, all these COVID-related apprehensions go away and people are free to move around as they please, I think that convenience is something that people would not like to let go of. Okay. So it's here to stay. That's, that's, that's one. Um, well, if talking in our terms, uh, well, what it really means is even today, quite truthfully and honestly, our digital to physical ratio would be 2 to 98. Okay. Uh, another one year expected to become maybe 3, 3 and a half is to 90, uh, whatever, 96 and a half. And, but maybe in another uh, six years time, it would be close to 7% which I think is a pretty good benchmark if you look at the US market even in 2020 in the grocery context it's only around a little over 10% of the overall grocery business in the United States today is online and the rest of it is still offline so okay. maybe 5 years or 6 years from now a 6 to 7% share of Indian online grocery business would be pretty good I would say but yes uh, coming back to the point I made originally some changes are irreversible in our society and consumer mm -hmm. behavior would be uh, aligned along those lines. A couple of other very quick points I would like to make. One is, uh, and I'm, I mean, uh, pardon me, but I'm only talking about the context of the large, you know, the vast FMCG and uh, food and grocery uh, world. Uh, the, in our world and all of us, you know, as shoppers and consumers, so we understand what we're talking about. Uh, the relevance of your neighborhood grocer is something that has come back in a very big way. So I'm talking about digital versus physical versus, you know, what it really does is 
all those large hyper big modern format stores the hyper hyper stores their role is once again set to be redefined because maybe tomorrow or even now their role could be reshaped as experience and exploration zones so people go there experience products explore new products new packaging new variants that come into the market then quietly come back home and add it to the smart you know the smart shop shopping basket in the online apps so i think that is going to happen even in food grocery and fmcg going mm-hmm. forward uh okay okay pawan i i understand but uh, though when you draw examples with us the only thing is you know our markets being so diverse i mean there is one side which you spoke about access the other side we we, we spoke about uh, you know uh, customer behaviors in different use cases and, uh, and 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 domestic grocery consumption the variety on that also is is it you know, is probably i don't know how many times more than western market so obviously the diversity creates lot of challenges when you also see uh, the online versus um, offline version that's exactly on time uh, gentlemen but i have one quick question which is more like you know uh, i just want to know your quick opinion on um, i i clearly seen we have four gentlemen here the two on this side which which is essential just talking like you know okay online will become um and we have the other side where we have lifestyle and durable which talks about a balance um i just want to know the buying behavior in general in 2021 what do you what do you what do you see uh, will it be 2020 or will it be different will it be physical physical or digital um, let let's start with uh, ritesh if you can just quickly see i think uh, what we have seen especially in the smaller towns is uh, you know outside of delhi bombay bangalore outside of these three cities the stores are really full now okay so it's mm-hmm. almost like uh, people are celebrating uh, the the end of covid by coming out okay, okay. so it's physical it's, in some ways it's a problem for us in the store uh, because uh, we, you know we still have to protect our employees uh, but you know there seems to be almost a you know coming offline with a vengeance kind of thing <laughs> so, okay so it's physical for what, next what few I... months that's going to be the case all right okay kashyap yeah so yeah i, I kind of uh, agree i think uh, customers are back in our in the stores uh, but i think the if i were to take a guess on what will lead the growth uh, i think it will be digital okay great vikas yeah i completely agree with kashyap uh, i think uh, the 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 growth or the quantum of people you know adopting a newer methodology or newer channel will be much higher uh, when it comes to physical or digital digital will be much higher uh, there is there is no denying of the fact that physical is uh, uh, is going to be there and it is uh, currently the largest segment but uh, the growth and the pace at which you see digital growing will be unprecedented in digital digital your thought pavan and uh, we close Okay, very quickly. Uh, physical will come back, and digital will be the flag bearer, driving the growth even forward. Right. At a faster pace. Great. So I think I think uh, you know I just want to quick, give a quick point. You know, we, I come from communication industry, and you know the recent survey said the retailers will look at uh, kind of a. Uh, offline online presence both which we we all spoke but about 7% of retail shopping mindset would remain both kind of a scenario because one the fear in the back of the mind saying what happened and the other as ritesh mentioned to go out and express you know so that's that's the feel around so uh, gentlemen thank you so much for your time i think we, we really heard some great uh, views from all of you over to <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Vadapali, Mr. Goshal, Mr. Singh, Mr. Chauhan, and Mr. Ayer for this love. Thank you, everyone. Thursday, Infobip, uh, a special series brought to you by Exchange for Media in association with Infobip, and uh, we see you soon next week, same time. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.